Hello everybody, welcome to the Blood Bowl Super League show episode 1. So the idea for this is we're going to look at one replay in like you know in detail, look at the results of each of the other games, look at the uh, league tables, look at the fixtures and uh, going to do all this with a special guest each week and this week we've got Purple Chest to kick us off so let's get into it. Right so first up we've got Rick Reckless um, fought to a hard fought draw 1-1 one, one with Gdanik. Yeah, absolutely, Jim. Um, I mean, Rick Reckless is on an absolute tear through Blood Bowl at the moment, isn't he? Really I think is. people looking at this before uh, before it all kicked off would have thought that uh, Gdanik had a huge advantage here. Um, uh, to me, a better team, uh, a, a coach that's certainly known as a better coach, perhaps in the wider community. But at the moment, there's just no stopping Rick Reckless. Uh, and with the build that he's put together, um, this is the all ogre build, isn't it? <laughs> It is, yeah. He's got six ogres with block. Um, he, he made quite a few removals, but you know, not not really overly so. Um, he got stopped on his offensive drive. Uh, Gdanik scored in eight turns, and then Rick put in the throw teammate to make it one-one. Yeah, I mean, you you love seeing a throw teammate. They're not that great in odds. Um, I mean, in the new rule set that's coming, things are changing again. They are going to get a little bit easier, and some bits a bit tougher too. Uh, but yeah, those ogres, I mean, perhaps everyone looks at them and thinks, well, if he bangs everything out, then he's got a chance. But he didn't do that this game. As you said, stopped on his own drive, uh, but managed to get that, uh, that, that TTM away at the very end of the game to tie it up. Um, Nick's got to be smarting. I think that's one he would have had down as a win. Yeah, absolutely. He's a big banana skin for everyone, Rick. But they all mm. kind of need that win if they want to win the uh, if they want to win the group, probably. Yeah, it's going to be a very high variance game. Um, look, you know the way he got that same build through into the blitz pits uh, through four qualifying rounds, all of them at one minute two. He knows how to coach that team in that. Well, I say coach that team. He knows how to do what that team does in a minute. <laughs> Uh, no one's going to fancy the look of it right now. Oh, absolutely. That's five games he's coached them in and hasn't lost a single one. Yeah, incredible, incredible stuff. Absolutely. Uh, Gdanik, though, still a, a lurking monster in that league uh, that all the others, I think, are fearing. A really nice build he's got there. Um, I, I think that team was going to do extremely well, but it's not started as I thought it would. No, a bit slow at the blocks. Right, let's have a look at the next one. And this is uh, Crucifer taking on Knorr. Um There you go, 1-1 one, one draw. Yeah, I, I mean, another one I wouldn't have put money on that result at the start. Um, no, Crucifer, I think it's worth staying right at the start, probably known as uh, by some people still as the king of the bangers. And I think that's very, very unfair. I've seen him coach some pro elves. I've even faced him uh, when he had a much smaller pro elf team than my dwarves. And frankly, I was lucky to scrape away with a draw in that one. Uh, you know, very creative use of the wizard. Of course, he doesn't have those sorts of options here, but he is very, very good with pro elves. His positioning game is absolutely on point, no matter what race he's got in front of him. Uh, I think there's a dark horse there that people may have underrated him on an agility team. And again, a team I expected to do actually incredibly well. Knorr, I'm going to be honest, I fancied this to be perhaps the whipping boy of the division down there with Rick. Uh, Knorr, I think, is a lovely guy, a fantastic streamer, brings a lot of new people to Blood Bowl. But perhaps this is company some people thought, really, is he going to be able to hold his own there? Well, the answer was he did. He, he really knows his rats. Uh, I watched this game back. I didn't watch it live. Um, he coached, I thought, really, really well. Uh, the, the time wasn't his, his favorite thing about it. Um, one minute really pushing his, uh, his ability to both, you know, do what he wants to do with the rats and at the same time explain what he's doing. Um, so I do think he needs to maybe have a little think about that. But a really, really good result for him holding Crucifer to a 1-1 one -one there. Uh, and a cracking game of Blood Bowl. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, Crucifer started with the ball, scored on turn 8. Uh, didn't really get a lot of a lot of problem. Uh, I thought there was a few times maybe his Kano should have, like, could and should have cage dive just because things were yeah. pretty desperate. Um, and then... Uh, of course, and then, and then uh, the second half, that the the attrition came, and uh, Cano managed to manage to score in eight turns of his own drive as well. So, uh, yeah, a, a hard fought draw there, and uh, should be quite interesting going forward with those guys. Yeah, really sets the league up well. Um, those those two games, which I would have you know picked as not that difficult wins. Um, both of them ending in draws, so all to play for. Absolutely. And the final game in Group A was Fatin with his Pro Elves versus Elliot with his Orcs. 
Yeah, I, I'll be honest, Jim, I'm not crazy on this orc build. I'm not really sure what it's trying to do. It's it's very strong and stable, and we all know how that worked out. But it just <laughs> seems to lack killing power. Yeah, it's it's a weird one, isn't it? And like orcs, orcs are just yeah. in this format, they're they're not really that good, right? Because they don't do anything broken. Like they're fair, aren't they? Whereas yeah. elves can run around and do a million two pluses or one turn, or you know, dwarves can really beat people up. Humans can have the guard and the speed, and orcs are just seem a bit boring, don't they? And they've they've got to rely on that armor being relevant. Basically. Absolutely. They're a lot slower than people sort of, you know, perhaps think when they first look at them. I mean, I know the Blitzers can move six, but then the Blackhawks can't keep up with them. Um, I just question how he thinks he's going to get the wins out of it. I mean, he might get the odd draw, but unless he bangs some people out and they haven't taken any kill skills to do that, then I just, he's going to have to be big up on numbers to sort of take the ball off anybody. And Fatin, of course, an absolute expert with the Pro Elves. Uh, not surprising to see him, you know, an absolute master of how that got done. What was really nice there was to see him cope with the one minutes. Um, a lot of times he hasn't thrown himself forward for Blitz Pit, thinking that he's he's a, a slower, more steady, more thinking coach that really likes to look and find those plays. Uh, and he found that in a minute he was coping fairly well, so that was beautiful to see. Uh, and of course, you know, that's the only win we've seen so far, so that means he's, uh, he's the table topper, he's setting the pace. Elliot, of course, way down at the bottom. Yeah, so uh, well, let's have a look at the table then. So yeah, there you go, Fatin at the top of the league with his big win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, very much all to play for. I mean, with so many draws, uh, you know, two out of the three games going to draws. Really, you know, Fatin is in the bull seat, isn't he? Uh, always amusing to see Eliod below someone that hasn't even played. Uh, that <laughs> that I do take um, a little bit of joy from. Uh, I'm not one to mock Jim. That's widely known. Uh, but yeah, let's all laugh at Elliot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, there's seven people in the division, so someone will have a bye week each week. Uh, this mm -hmm. turn was this was Shawnee's turn to miss out. So, uh, but I mean, that's quite a good week for him, really, with all those draws. He's you know, yeah, he's, he's in yeah. Instead of being spot. left behind, absolutely, definitely, he's um, you know, he's looking at that table, thinking, well, that could be a lot worse for me. Um, you know, there's space here. If, if they get more draws and I get a win, suddenly I'm straight back in it with a game less played. Um, so, in, in some ways, one of the big winners this week is Shawnee. Yeah, incredibly. And so next week we'll have Crucifer versus Gadenic, Fatin versus Kanor, and Shawnee versus Eliod. Well, I mean, this group, eh, it's fascinating, isn't it? I mean, Crucifer, Gadenic with, with a draw on each. Um, if that's a win for one, then, then one of the, I, I think, the two sort of favourites of the group, in my, my view, is going to be in a really, really tough position. Um, two excellent coaches, two really nice builds. I think that's going to be a, a, an absolute monster of a tussle. I, I don't know where I'd put my money, Jim. Uh, I seem to have used a lot of gambling analogies. I think that one's very 50-50. Yeah. Mate, you're in bets. In play bets now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Then, of course, Fatin Kanor. I mean, if, if Fatin can get another win there, um, yeah. he's going to be, you know, zooming away at the top of this league. Um, Kanor, as I said, the surprise package from week one in some ways, maybe. Uh, can he keep that level up? Can he uh, Can he bring the ratness to that pro-elf build? Uh, I mean, he managed it in week one. Nothing to say he couldn't do it again in week two. And if Kanor could take the win there, that would really throw the group wide open. Absolutely. And then Eliod, well, he's, uh, he's snookered. He's behind the eight ball. He's the man playing catch-up. Um, I mean, Shorty is not the person you'd want to be facing in that position, is it? No, he's so good. Like he's, and I guess people might not know Shorty so much. Like you know, the people who aren't into it as much because he, he 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 streamed for a bit and then he's been away and he he doesn't stream yeah. that much. But he's he's really no, the, really good. At really the strong. enfant terrible of uh, of Blood Bowl. <laughs> uh, still a very young man. I do believe he started shaving. Um, <laughs> But, I mean, of course, chess keeps tempting him away, at which he is extraordinarily good. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think that there's an enormous amount linking Blood Bowl and chess. Lots of people think there is. I think they're wrong. Um, but uh, there, there's certainly some similarities, and certainly the same sort of tactical mind uh, can, can be very useful in both. But, of course, no dice in chess. Uh, and unlike one famous streamer who constantly says there isn't dice in Blood Bowl, there really, really is, isn't there, Jimmy? 
There really is, yeah. Um, so, it, it, I mean, yeah. All, I mean, this is the beauty of the Super League, right? Every match is going to be a great one. Um, yeah. And yeah. So, yeah, these these are the matches that are coming up this coming week. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, three crackers there. I mean, this is this is the whole point, hopefully, of the Streamers League, is that there really isn't a rotten pick there. There isn't one you think, oh, I could skip that one. Um, <laughs> all of those look like something you'd really want to wrap your eyeballs around. <laughs> yep. Right, so this is the match of the week. We've got to get the ref to start off with. Um, and it is Inarians Halflings versus Calcium's Humans. Um, Inarian has the Halfling Master Chef, which has stolen all of Calcium's rerolls. And there. what do you think about that, PC? Um, whew, I mean, I think if you're going to get your, all your rerolls stolen, probably better on your defensive drive. Um, I think it's going to be very, very tricky on an offensive drive to not have a single reroll to cope with problems. Um, I mean, this build from the halflings, uh, I mean, looking at this, they, they should be because they're halflings, the whipping boy of the group. But then you spot that they've got two dirty players, two block trees, they've got Puggy in juice, they've got a chef on top of that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's even a wrestle fling knocking around somewhere on this field. So they've yep. got some incredible tools. Uh, I think they're going to be surprising at least one, if not two, coaches this round, this uh, this season, and I, I just hope it isn't me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, re I'm, re I'm really terrified of this game. It's like lose lose, isn't it? You know, if you... it kind of is. Yeah, if you beat flings, well, you've beaten flings. Well done. But if you lose, my goodness, are the uh, are the memes going to fly? <laughs> now, the one thing we haven't mentioned is the block sure hands fling as well. So. Traditionally, you think if I can at least get hold of the ball carrier, I've got a reasonable shot here, but perhaps not so much. Yeah. So Calcium's gone block on his uh, ogre, block on his thrower, and he's got a mighty blow tackler. I mean, I think all of the human teams had three guard blitzers and a mighty blow tackler, and then they just they just switched on the extra skills, right? So, yeah, I mean, I think if I was building humans, the only change I'd make is I'd probably take the block off the ogre and have a guard on one of the catchers. I mean, Blood Bowl 2 famously gives catches AV8. I think that's really worth leaning into. Um, it's very, very strong on a piece that fast. So, I mean, that's probably the only change I'd make. I might even take block off the uh, off the thrower and give it to a second runner and have a blodge runner as well. Uh, but obviously, three guards on the blitzers and a killy blitzer is, is very much the state of the art for humans. Uh, and that tackle mighty blow uh, is going to get some work done against these flings, I'm sure. Yeah, that's the thing. It is. Calcium's just going to be trying to get those hits every turn. Yeah, trying to remove all the halflings, <laughs> as many halflings as he can. Yeah, there's a lot of them. You you may not remove them for the second half, but you just need to win each half on numbers. Yeah. And he's basing basing up a lot of them, and like it is dodge, isn't it? With elves, of course, one in thirty six dodges, pretty reliable. Yeah. With halflings, all those one in nines, anyone can, you know, really yeah, absolutely reasonably in the turn. Yeah, it is only a one in nine. Um, I mean, that feels like something you should be able to do. Amazon's do it all the time, but you know, you're probably expecting if you're doing five of them, you're expecting one of those to fail. That's that's how one in nines work. It doesn't take nine for one to fail. You know that the average fail comes after four and a half. So it, that's also a reasonable chance that in any given turn, it could be the very first one. That's not that unusual on a one in nine. Yeah, so you do have to get your turn ordering spot on, but if anyone knows how to coach flings, it's definitely an army. He's one of the better fling coaches around. For sure. He doesn't use his bribe there. Yeah, that's a bit of a surprise. Okay, he did the did, bribe yeah. failed. The bribe oh. failed. Oh, but just what I was thinking, to get the ref is very, very useful to the flings, perhaps not so much to the humans. Um, yeah, he, he took that bribe to go, hooray, we can foul Hearty without a lot of uh, assists. And it's already cost him. Yeah. Nice blitz direction there to get an extra block. Yep. It's all about getting as many hits on. on yeah, as I mean, you get, absolutely. Even if it's a, if it's at the end of the round, even a blockless hit, I may well take a both down because uh, you know my armor much more likely to hold up than the flings. Yeah. And again, this a lovely block direction there. Blocking his uh, blocking his way so that the fling now has a three die to face coming back, and this is a you know a blockless hit. Does he take the both down? He does. He, exactly what I was talking about there, Jim, and does remove the fling. So that's uh, is that three flings gone already. Yeah, yeah, that's rapid, isn't it? Three three killed and one sent off. 
Wow, so four flings down. So just seven on Inarian's team. Uh, but of course, he did base himself on a tree to do that. And there we go. There's uh, there's the first human taken out exactly because of that. That these trees would block absolutely uh, filthy, dangerous to anything they can get near. Yeah. Oh boy, you could geofy to hit the tackler as well. That seems nice. Yeah, I think I would. Um, you know, I, that's such a ruinous piece for the flings to be facing. But if you can get it down, I think that's uh, that's a good investment. Well, so he's choosing to. Uh, yeah, creating some space instead. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously totally fair. Yep. Oh. But boy, imagine if you chip and bang you blow tackle, you're really, really, really happy, aren't you? But I don't know how on earth you'd protect the ball if you did that. <laughs> Interesting choosing not to follow up there, uh, which could have tied up, you know, the human he hit and another one. Uh, but instead, he's uh, he's sacrificing a fling to the, uh, to the tackle mighty blow. Yeah. And this ball does not look in a terribly safe spot right now. No. And he kind of had to, right? Because just a dodge and a geofight to, yep. to hit him. So, yeah, maybe he could have blitzed him. I don't know. Well, even now, it's a 3 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus to be tackle mighty blowing this ball. Well, yeah. I mean, Calcium's just put a human in the spaces he would need to run through. So it looks like he isn't going for that. Nope. Yeah. Just settling for hitting the fling that was on him. And uh, getting a, a screen back. No, the blitz is coming in on that fling. No, it's coming in on a bling that's not there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's saying if you want to score, you've got to you've got to toss him off, right? Um. Yep. <laughs> and Arian, I mean, a little more frightened of that than, uh, for example, Sky Blue Monty, another well-known uh, fling coach, loves to fling the flings. Mm. I think Anarian much prefers to uh, destroy your team with the trees. Yes. Well, I've gone for the double GF5. <laughs> of course, I say two threes and a two to uh, you know to hit the fling, but of course no re rolls for calcium. I was forgetting that. Yeah, yeah. So that definitely makes. Yeah. Now I've remembered that ball. it makes much more sense that he didn't do those uh, quite a lot of dice to hit the ball. Yeah. <laughs> but now he is playing patty cake with the mighty blow tackle, and at least has it down in both trees tackle zones. <laughs> Yeah, and to be fair, the lack of rerolls does give uh, Inari a bit of breathing space, despite being rigid to seven players. I wonder yep. if thro just throwing the fling there was the best play, right, and just getting a touchdown in. Yeah, I, I don't disagree, Jim. I mean, that ball has had to retreat and be an assist for a puggy block, and just doesn't look safe, does it? No, it really doesn't. And with the Ogre standing up on Puggy, this is now suddenly a lot of pressure in that backfield on very, very few flings. Yeah. The tree's massively separated from where the play is happening. This is uh, this is not brilliant from an Aryan. I do think throwing the little fling didn't need to be a long throw. Could have done the uh, simple little three-step pass there, maybe. Although, then it could have landed on humans, so that is a, another worry. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, with, with halflings, you're unlikely to have a good shot, are you? <laughs> yeah. And when you're down so many players, I think that was maybe his... Oh, so he's not hitting the ball? No, uh, again, an interesting decision. I mean, trying to get the mighty low tackle back relevant and also trying to hit a fling at the same time. That's okay, but it has left these trees based. Each of them now gets a block hit on another human. Uh, the ball that looked in such danger can just absolutely... There we are, one in nine, it's way away from that. Yeah, he wants to GFI because he wants to be next to the tree so he can have yeah. the throw option. Yeah, and also that the, the flings he's already moved and the tree together do give him a nice little sort of semi screen away from where most of these humans are. And there we are, you see, I said, you know, basing the tree, there's times you've got to do it. Uh, there's times certainly with AV9, might, uh, Thick Skull, I don't mind doing it, but with a, you know, with a human, it's not so great. It's very risky. Okay, then the other one's rooted, hasn't it? That, that could be huge. Another human there going off. Yeah. So Calcium's losing players here. Apple comes in. Well, I feel a little mystic there that both of those humans basing trees, you know, paid the paid the iron price for it, didn't they? Yeah. yeah that was, I mean, that was a dodgy blitz, though, right, from Inari, and I think I would mm. be much prefer to just have the uh, fling one to the right and then block with this one because. If, yeah. if he'd taken root on the blitz, he wouldn't have even been able to make the block, which would have been huge, wouldn't it, if he couldn't have made the block? So... Yeah, I mean, the problem then is that an eye cage with flings just isn't particularly strong, but um, I, I, 
I mean, it needs must, Jim. You know, he's really, really down players. So I guess he felt he felt he had to, that there wasn't really an option. I mean, ultimately, he's he's formed a nice, safe shape, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, and I wonder if Calcium feels warned off uh, basing this tree. Uh, because if not, I think throwing the halfling next turn is probably a favoured play here, isn't it? Yes. I don't see another easy way out of this. No, this is the, the, the screws are tightening on Inarian's offensive drive here. Ooh, that move to the sideline. Yeah, I don't think he's coming into this cage. I think he's, yeah, retreating and trying to cover the throat squares. Mm. Can't argue with that, to be fair. And then tagging with a catcher this time because he's got the Okay. It's still armor eight, of course. Or might yeah, it, it's still three die on an armor eight, needing a block or a both down because of the, you know, the tree does have block. Yep, and he stuns him, but he's not throwing, is he? That's the thing. He's not throwing by doing that. Which again, I think it was the fear from calcium. That's why he's yep. done that screen out there. Yeah, and with the tackle piece retreated into a, a reasonable covering spot without throwing the fling, exactly, it's just another little cage here he's trying to form. Makes the dodge with the half fling to close it up, but uh, obviously Puggy, I mean, he is strength three, but that's still a weak spot on this cage. It is. There, there definitely is a route in, but no, he's just choosing to uh, to mark the ball. Now he gets the power so he can fall and base the ball, maybe? No, he's not. He's not basing the ball. Yep, yeah, drops back and screens again. Really like basing the ball there, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, I mean, at least he's, uh, again, tagged that tree with the ogre, which uh, should do something. He has tagged the ball, though. You know, that piece came from in behind, so that's that's okay, isn't it? I think this shape's pretty decent from Calcium. Yeah, and he's, again, again, he's, he's kept his tackler back dry, hasn't he? Ready to hit something next turn. Yep. Oh, did you see that, Jim? Huge dubs for the tree there. Huge. So now no reroll, and, and what did he do yeah. for the rest of this turn? This is Oof. this is very problematic now. Works himself a little two die on that human. Did get the pal, but it's still looking very hard to get this safe. Yeah, I think he's gone. He's gone too far, hasn't he? He's got to use. Surely. This is a corner. Well, he's oh, done yeah. the exact opposite, Jimmy. He had a little bit of a cage in place, and then he just ran it away into two completely different directions. <laughs> I've, I've no idea what the next move was, but I'm not sure I'd have liked it. Yeah, well, I think at first he, he wanted to stay next to the tree, and then he realised that he had to get further forward to get in his scoring range, and that this guy yeah. wasn't really doing anything, and it was just all, you know, minute turns, I think. He just fell apart a bit with, with everything that was happening. Yeah, I mean, perhaps that was it. Just trying to create a couple of scoring options in different directions, um, and working out that he'll he'll just pick the ball back up uh, when he inevitably gets hit this turn, <laughs> which surely to goodness it is going to happen. Yeah. Well, now, I mean, there's there's still another turn for calcium after this, right? So the first mm -hmm. thing he does is get the canoring threat. Catch a go. Yep. And, uh, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's good, solid play. The tackle mighty goes for the ball, gets it down at least. I didn't originally love pushing it towards Puggy, but I guess if you push it in the other direction, the only other real choice, obviously not behind the tree, um, was two steps behind the tree, and uh, perhaps that, you know, this this direction for the ball made it a bit less likely to scatter into a tree tackle zone. Yeah. Which you definitely don't want it in. No, for sure. For sure, that is a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> These trees, I know one's been rooted, but they're really behaving well. Um, you know, really getting those hits in with the block. Not quite doing the damage you might expect, but... Uh, oh my them. god! Wow! <laughs> that is a huge... Well, it, I mean, it was a one in three because it was off tackle, but obviously threw the reroll at it. Not no, enough no, no, to he save was, him. He was, off, he was off the throw. He dodged away from the throw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're tackler. right. Yeah, that was yeah. his plan. And uh, now... This is uh, really nice for Calcium, isn't it? Here he's just got the sure hands pick up, yeah. catch handoff, double GFI to go one away. Yep, so it's a one in nine, uh, followed by a one in nine. <sighs> which he makes. Two, two pluses. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. 
No, that tripwire did not see that coming, did not get a chance to sneak down on the field and put that tripwire up. Well, 1-0 at the half for Calcium. The ball's going to be in his hands. I don't see how this can go wrong from here. I think this is uh, a great position for him to be in. Yeah, very, very strong position now. Did Inarian try enough to get forward? Yeah, that's the thing. Is it, was, it was hard. I mean, he was down to seven players. He was. So he was. quickly. Um, so this half, he only steals one. Uh, and I mean, the bribe turned out to be a bit of a trap, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, he was going to be fouling anyway, wasn't he? Let's be honest. With his dirty yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Two dirty players, but um, yeah, it didn't didn't do him any favours, did it? Um, yes, you don't bring two dirty players just for show. <laughs> yeah, but he's got he's back to eleven. He's got fifteen players, so he's he has still managed to start on eleven players for the second half. Um, but yeah, 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 you're right. Like he didn't. It was hard for him because he had so few mm. players. So I think maybe he should have mm -hmm. taken a shot on the throw. Um, yeah, there was that turn where he retreated instead of taking the throw teammate option. And I, I do think, despite it meaning that it was, you know, quite likely that Calcium could have driven back. Uh, he'd have got another roll on those KOs. And if it had worked, the worst case he was looking at was 1-1 one, one at the end of the half. Uh, this way, of course, he is one down. And that is a danger for us with our dwarf teams, isn't it? Because yeah. if 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 Inarian can like score on turn four against us, it's much harder for dwarfs to score in four turns than it is for oh, something like massively humans. so, Jim. I mean, driving back in short terms for dwarves, even if you just throw flings under each body just to slow them up, I mean, you've got the flings to do it. Mm. So and it uh, whilst humans you know, fear the three pluses away from a tree, I tell you, it's a lot better than a four plus to get off them. <laughs> yeah. Looks like uh, Calcium's going for a strong, strong movement here. Going to, going to get that quick 2 0 and kill the game. Yeah, I, I don't hate this. I mean, the other option, of course, is just to pull all the way back. Uh, the trees aren't going to come at you anytime soon. And if the flings do, well, I mean, 11 humans should be able to hold, or even 9 humans should be able to hold 9 halflings off pretty much indefinitely. <laughs> um, but I don't hate this from Calcium. If he can get two up on the board, it looks very, very strong for him. Let's pick up with sure hands. Gets Here goes that catcher. Mm. Or oh, it must be a lineman if it's only moved that far. No, I guess I guess he he just wants the eye cage. Yeah, yeah, he just wants the eye cage. Okay. There's no puggy anymore. And nope. So. Uh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, no, no ogre either. <laughs> oh, boy. Huge. Huge removal. So, yeah, so, like, if, uh, the guard would be nice if Pookie was around. But as it mm. is, do you just go for the uphill against a dodger? I don't know. It's unlikely to do anything, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, I mean, is, is the rest of fling survived? Because that would give us you some option here, but... Also, I did wasn't crazy on the setup. I think time maybe was a factor there, but there was uh, was a gaping hole, wasn't there, Jim? There was. Oh my God! He re-rolled in a triple. No, he re-rolled a GFI and then rolled triple scores on the blitz. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, talk about your all-time equity shifts. Right then, I think we've gone from the flings having a, a chance to stop this drive to none at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's sad times for uh, Inaria. I think probably the biggest question here is how big the score ends up. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Patcher runs in 2 0. Absolutely. Um, I mean, in the main, I normally like putting a position, a position or someone down by where you're planning to go over the line in case of a GFI fail. Uh, but of course, Calcium, I think, had the natural range there. It'd been one space short. I think he was just thinking about, you know, maybe Stink Pot Storming and then. It's, it's one minute, isn't it, right? So he probably yeah. just automatically put him down there and then thought for a few more seconds and then thought, screw it, it's 2 0 to halflings. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> And if you are sat there vaguely clicking through some YouTubes, I mean, please don't underestimate how tough this is to do in a minute. Yeah, Blood Bowl, sure. yes, it's a game of luck, but there is tactics, there is thought involved, and doing that in a minute can really compress what options you come up with. Absolutely, yeah. So 
So a very rowdy fling line, right up in the face of the humans. The uh, the rest of the, the three humans on the line of scrimmage, of course, the rest have withdrawn. So uh, flings do need uh, go for it to blitz. And it's a very solid line of uh, humans. I don't see actually, um, I don't see Marion taking that option and trying to bust through it at this point. No. Catches the kick off though, so he gets to move up and maybe hand off and toss a fling next turn. Maybe. He seems very hesitant to do it so far, though. He does, but he's 2-0 behind now. He's got to go for these high-variance players, hasn't yep. he, you would think? Yep. 100%. Oh, another Kaz! Okay. So now Kazing will be down at 10 players, Max. It strikes me these... Uh, these things, as I said, that they're going to surprise someone. Um... But, I mean, humans are not their ideal matchup, are they? No, no, that's funny, because, like, as much as, obviously, dwarves have an infinite tackle, which they despise, at least dwarves are slow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's it's the fastness and, like, the, the you know, they, they're more likely to just steamroll pro-elves or whatever than they are yeah. to steamroll humans, aren't they? So. Yeah, it's it is interesting, though, that even the, uh, even the line elves on the pro-elf team have one more pace of movement than a fling does. <laughs> oh well there you go there's a send off his, his dirty players have made two fouls and had a bribe fail and got sent off on both of them that is, that is disappointing yeah that's some tough dice but um, you know tough dice do fall into every gamer's existence you've got to find strategies that cope with that or even possibly that expect it but okay, there was the first half that he took all the re-rolls this time uh, only the one so Calcium does have more weapons at his disposal to stop this try yeah, that's very true. And of course, he might not be too concerned about uh, an Aryan scoring because he'd fancy himself to then just go back up to 3 1, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that sort of is the plan here. You know, try and chip some halflings. If you get a decent shot, take it. But ultimately, it's it's all fine here, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, Calcium again does have the strength and pace advantage. If the ball is put back in his hands, doesn't even need to score. Just needs to find a nice safe space for, space for it. Yep. Well, he's cleared the, he's cleared the tree there. Yeah. So, and he could have just blocked, right? But he's blitzing, so that makes me wonder, is he going to go for a toss? It's not impossible, but the ball's a little deep this turn, isn't it? It has to sort of yeah, move he's up. Not, he, he's yeah. handed him off. And there you go, he's going for it. Wow, okay, so this is a fling that has the movement left, if it manages the landing. <laughs> he sticks the landing, is he in range? Yes! Yeah, he absolutely is. And we have a tied game, though the ball going back into human hands is not ideal for the uh, flings, of course, but... Not I think you do take one. the early score there, try and get your KOs back and have another go at it. Yeah, 2-1, two, 2-1 one, two, one PC, 2-1 still for uh, Calcium. So, yes, sorry, yeah. So it's it's still a long way back into this match for Anarian. Yeah, absolutely it is. <laughs> but he did what he had to do. He had to score as soon as possible. Yeah. You know, eat into that lead. And he's made three removes. I mean, that is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Three cars. He's made four, actually, because Kelsey Mapo would one. <laughs> yeah, he's used an Mapo. So he's starting to get on top of the numbers, which is going to create some options. Still got a lot of flings on the pitch. A uh, very aggressive setup, very far forwards, this time not leaving that space on the wings. I think this is the setup he wanted to do the first time, but probably just uh, the time prevented him doing so. Yeah. And so also, how'd you get through this? I mean, you know, take a tree down or... I mean, if you blitz the, the flings on the front of each of the inner uh, walls, then there is a dodge route through on a 3+. plus. Yeah. But if you come just with your catchers, then you know flings are the same strength. They can get back there. They can they can gang up on them and uh, get the hits. I think this is um, this is probably a turn to do the withdrawn offense. <laughs> Maybe, but uh, we can see here there's a mistake by Anarian, probably due to the one minute turns. Uh, mm -hmm. The wrestle fling was KO'd. He recovered from KO, but he didn't swap him onto the field. Yeah, that, that fling is so key to taking down blodge pieces or even just dodge pieces that I really think it needs to be there. And that is the sack piece, surely. Yeah. Uh, but he's playing without it. So yeah, um, Calcium high kick and gets... Oh, God. Makes a removal there. 
Get yep. with the thrower. And yeah, he's doing a bit of withdrawn offense. Yes. He is. He's being very disciplined with that uh, that tackle, Mighty Blow. It's hitting all the right pieces at the right times. Uh, going for the simple blitz, just trying to get the numbers back in, in Calcium's favor or less against Calcium. Um, I think that's some really disciplined play, some good stuff from Calcium. Yeah. And of course, in a position, as I said, where he is 2 1, he just needs to uh, defend this ball in a nice turtle miles away from the tree. What's going on, Jim? <laughs> why why isn't he doing that? Well, it's it's you know, it's it's somewhat defended, right? He's got some players it, it is and it yes, it is, yes. Um and I, I got that there was a little screen in front of the tackle mighty blow piece, but then putting the other two right in front of the trees, I think that's a little rowdy, a little far forward. Yeah. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him run away a bit more. And, uh, I think we'll see him, yeah, take that go yeah. for it to make sure he's basing the tackle mighty blow. Yeah, I really like that move from Inarian. It's uh, the one he hit over is also in that same tree's tackle zone, just hidden behind it. Yeah. So uh, this is not a bad position he's got himself into. Um, I, I think Calcium could have played a lot better on that turn. Yeah. And he's, he's put his sure hands next to the tree here, hasn't he? Um, yep. So this 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 is setting up the throw. If something happens uh, next turn, he will be able to throw him in and maybe pick it up. So I like that. Yeah, me too. I still don't see an easy route uh, to the ball, but... Um... Well, no, I mean, there isn't, is there? But <laughs> <No>. <laughs> at least he's got the option. Like, you know, it's important, I think, as flings to keep somebody next to your trees. So yeah. that you do have that option if, if it arises. Yeah, and hence, no, the ball isn't coming forwards, Jim. Oh, Lord. So, we talked about the withdrawn offence. I know it has other names, but not for me. <laughs> and here, we are withdrawing our ball, um, but we've seen this go wrong. Recently, in a in a chalice game between uh, Lesnik and Dionysian, um, yeah. Lesnik had a, a withdrawn thrower, uh, which he didn't put any cover on at all, and eventually Dio got into it at the backfield, got some elves around it, and then with a nice early turn fail, was able to take the ball and go 1-0 up. Didn't he manage to win the game, but he did manage to get that far. Kasim still concentrating on removing these flings, and it is doing so, so yeah. you know, it doesn't have to get many more numbers down until suddenly he's in a decent position for the total numbers. Oh, he's done GFI there. And I, don't really I think he was going to do two and try and tag one of the other flings, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I guess it was. But they were already double tagged, and one of them on guard. So you've already got two die on either of those flings with the uh, the other human there. Okay, wow, another throw that works. And this guy can uh, this guy yep. can double GFI here to tag the ball. He can and has, and uh, now it's a, a one die with the block, isn't it? Yeah. Gets the pow. Gets the big old pow. Now with a good scatter, this is in range for a two-two. <laughs> That's a good scatter. Oh well. A scatter of the gods right into the hands of that fling, who does two more go for it. So four go for it and a five plus hit there, as well as just the least likely catch you've seen for a while. And suddenly we're in a 2 2 game, Jim. Incredible, incredible stuff. Now, um, that's all about this uh, this withdrawn offense, still not having any cover for that. Uh, I mean, it was a block thrower facing flings. I guess it was fine for it to be sort of potatoed backwards on its own. Yeah. But any one human stood directly in front of it, and that, that was then impossible to get that level of dice on it. Yeah, or just even one further back, right? I don't know if he could have gone one further back, but if he had got one further back to have been out of range of the assist, he's yeah. much less likely to get uphill power. But, I mean, you'd have looked at that position and never thought that two flings are going to be all over that ball carrier. But, uh, you know, if you do your, do your counting of the squares and include the go-for-its are free movement, of course, then <laughs> yeah. it, uh, it, it, it not only was it possible, it happened. We just saw it. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, Inarian, Inarian saw it and he, he went for it. And that's what that's going to happen, isn't it? You know, these guys... Uh, I think it's I think it's really, like, I think it's really advantageous for, like, Inarian. I know he's got halflings, so it's pretty rubbish. But I think it's a really big advantage for, like, you know, say, Fatin. Oh, my God, there's a blitz. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, now, this is where you suddenly regret the fact trees. that both of you, yeah, that both your trees are tied up on the line. If he'd kept one on the line and one back, just in case of the blitz, 
Uh, we could easily have seen 3-2 to Inarian. As it is a lot for these flings to do to get relevant to where that ball's landing. Yeah. If they're even going to try it. No, I think he's just going to really double screen and yeah, I think try so. and hang on for the 2-0. Um, but yeah, I think it's like, yeah, again, not as relevant right with Inarian because halflings are rubbish. But the, f <laughs> the fact that he is so experienced with halflings, it is going to help him in these minute turn situations. And like, yeah. you know, and like you with dwarves and fighting with pro elves and Andy Devil with dark elves, you know, people who yeah. really like played one race a lot are really going to have that... Um, you know, quite it's one of the reasons I play Dwarves a lot in Blitzbit, Jim. It's not necessarily I think they're strong in that format. It's that I think I can do them in a minute probably better than other races. Yeah. Um, because so many of the patterns just are there. I can look at a field and go, okay, so we move these three and it, that's how we start. Um, whereas, you know, I do think I'm reasonable with other races, but I perhaps just don't have that level of experience where the, the moves are automatically there when I look at the field. Yeah. He's got the power here. This is a huge power. This does... It is. This does yeah, that... Maker. Creates the opportunity for the score now. Just needs to get the ball to that. Oh, and there's an early fail in the turn. He's done the GFI. He had to do the GFIs. <laughs> is he going to do another one? Yep, he does the second yes, one. Yes, he is. No, I like that, Jim. Um, K Fogt, or Core, is very well known for even if a plan goes wrong early, he tries to stick to it and still drive it home. And that's exactly what we're seeing from these humans. That's, uh, that's a nice position he's managed to find there. Wow. A lovely, lovely little hole he poked open. Yeah. A lovely potato off through it. Of course, there yeah. were a lot of failed states that possible there, but they didn't come, and you can't rely on the opponent making a fail. Wow. And yeah, that was that was really good one, because this was looking pretty locked down, the score, and that was a nice move. I mean, obviously, he needed the pal, but once he got the pal, very nice. Very nice from Calcium to uh, find that pass play. Mm -hmm. It was, and also ballsy, because you know the fact is the reroll was gone. Um, I know there's a reroll on the throw and a reroll on the catch, but you still think is there something I can really, really risk? Do you think he should have maybe th thrown a half one? Yes, I think he should have done. I, I, I mean, I don't see him stopping this without that. There's just not enough pieces of the halfling team that can get back relevant. Ah, but this was and this it, was Calcium's reception though. So yeah. even if Calcium scores on turn sixteen, Inarion will have the throw teammate to make it three three. Yes. Um I, I mean that's all I can say about that, absolutely. <laughs> um, but Inarion seems to have already settled for this uh, this loss stroke uh, draw option. Yeah, yeah, this is I mean, having said that I don't know what he could else he could do about. No, it was rough, wasn't it? It was just literally throw, throw a halfling and hope it hits, hits the catcher, basically, and if it doesn't... Well, can you imagine how different the whole of this drive would have been if we only had one tree on the line of scrimmage? Yes, yeah, it could have been. It could have been huge. However, I mean, I am aware that exposes flings to risk, but sometimes you've got to. So, does he bang it in and leave... You know, with two? No. There's just no pressure. Surely you can stall it. Why we're stalling right on the actual touchline, at uh, the sorry sideline, is a little confusing to me. But we are. Yes, that does make it dangerous. If he can toss a halfling, we can get the one D surf, can't we? Yeah, you only need a halfling uh, on the sideline either side, and then Puggy can get in and do the the surf of the ball carrier. Oh, he just, he just one nines the first thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the play was there. To, it was to block this guy. And yep. then And then throw the other guy, and he could have gone in, and he could have... He, there was the one die surf was on. But Calcium makes it 3-2. Calcium makes it 3-2. What a cracking game of Blood Bowl. I mean, a much higher score than I think I'm expecting to see in most of the other games, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not undeserved. I mean, Calcium had a fantastic first half drive. Um, the halflings were always in trouble from that very early uh, time where they suddenly lost four flings. And uh, you looked at them, you thought, oh, where'd all the flings go? Yeah. Yeah. And it, was, it, was, it was very nice, wasn't it? Very patient and measured mm -hmm. with how many rerolls he had to. Uh, he had always have that in mind. And, you know, maybe he's played better than he would have done if he had a reroll, right? Because he was always... Yeah, perhaps so. It, it absolutely does force you to really concentrate on your positioning and your turn ordering, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Do you know what? I now still don't a... know what the best setup is against halflings. <laughs> I might well, find I mean, I, out. I, I... I quite like what uh, what Kelsey was doing here. He's trying to lap, trying to set up both in the landing zone, and making some, making forcing him to make some dodges through if he lands before it. Yeah, but well, there's there's got to be like a best five, line, six, isn't there? Seven, eight, nine. Well, that may be it, Jim, because on a nine, if they throw from just behind the line of scrimmage, on a nine they land one space behind the row, row of humans. On an eight they land on that row, obviously with a reasonable chance of knocking himself and the ball over at least. And it's only on a short kick that. Uh, yeah. Wow, okay, so we've got the blitz. Well, he's just going for it, isn't he? He really is. It looks like he's got 4-0, 4-2 uh, on his mind. <laughs> I mean, I guess by just completely, uh, you know, by completely walling up, he's going to blitz He's going to blitz the fling that could get thrown. Yep. And now it's got to be like a tree dodge, hasn't it? Well, it... it doesn't it doesn't I mean if you uh, use the second tree to blitz that piece off but the big problem is uh, finding something to throw finding something that can receive the ball and then be thrown afterwards yeah it's rough isn't that it that doesn't look easy but then nothing about this game has looked easy so far a bit unlucky with the skull there Dodged on two, three, four. I don't know. Oh, well. he, yeah, the problem is, the end. yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, the flings got proper monster, didn't they? Um, they did in wow. the end, yeah. yeah. And I thought calcium coached that really well. I know I joked uh, pre season about calcium, but uh, justifying his place in the Blood Bowl Streamers League or Super League right there. With a great result against Halflings. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was well played, though, and it was a great result. It was, it was a great game. Yeah, and, and Arian, I think, did reasonably well. I still think that when you spotted that that TTM, Jim, I think that was the answer there. Try and get the touchdown in. Try and get your KOs back, uh, and then see if you can hold them to one nil at the half. Uh, once he was one nil down at half time with the ball going into human hands, it always looked tough. But he did come roaring back in with a lovely score, followed by that incredible one-day uh, power to steal it off the thrower. And it's for a moment, it looked like we might see the person that the uh, that the flings are going to embarrass be this very first game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in incredible stuff. But not to be. Well, look, well done to both coaches. Um, I think the content so far, the games we've had to watch, have been really, really good. Yeah, yeah, fantastic stuff. And the second game was a dwarf mirror between Mr. Page 404 and Purple Chest. Mm. Um, I confess I was very, very happy to get away with the win in this one, Jim. It, it, I mean, it is a dwarf mirror, but at the same time, Mr. Page has taken a really creative dwarf build, uh, which I quite like for this format, particularly with the group he's dropped into. I think if he'd faced a lot of elves, it might be trickier. Uh, but for any that hasn't seen his build, he's taken a Death Roller, two Slayers, both with Mighty Blow. Um, and that drops him one reroll. Uh, I've got three, he's got two. And it means no Apothecary. So you know, if he suffers those first half misses with the Death Roller, then he's shorthanded for the second. Uh, but that didn't happen. Uh, the Death Roller did manage to stop my driver. Had a three plus to get away and score in about turn four. That failed. Uh, I did manage to stop him scoring back, though it got very, very close. Uh, he came out with a dwarf passing play, which I didn't expect, which put him into a really good position. Uh, I managed to leave him a three plus and a couple of two pluses to uh, to, to get it home, but he uh, he didn't manage those either with the rerolls gone. And then in the second half, um, I did manage to turn him over. Uh, I think he he felt on reflection. We had a chat afterwards that obviously in the dwarven scrum, I've perhaps got a bit more experience than him. Uh, he did expose his ball carrier in a way that perhaps wasn't needed. Uh, and from there it got very, very messy. And I was lucky enough to come away with the ball and hence come away with the win. But that Death Roller Dwarf is going to cause some problems for the other dwarfs in this division, which is uh, you, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty terrified of the Death Roller, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's not something I habitually coach a lot of myself. I mean, I do induce it if I'm facing a much bigger, nasty team. Mm. Uh, but it's it's lately I'm really starting to think perhaps I'm missing out. Perhaps I should be Death Rollering more. 
I mean, it's completely incredible when it's on the field. Like, yeah. No one can dispute that. The only thing is whether it's worth the the team value, isn't it? Like, but yeah, I mean, it, it's monstrosity to deal with. Yeah, it's hugely bloaty, and that's before you put any skills on it. Yeah, uh, and it's just not going to be around for enough of the game usually. Uh, though, if you are, you know, five hundred TV down, you can afford to induce it in and and throw a bribe on as too, as well, maybe. Uh, and then if you can stop a drive in the first half, so that you only use the bribe to get it there for the second half. I mean, I've seen 16 turns of, uh, of Death Roller action at times, and that is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah for sure. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Mr. Page does with this with this wild build. Yeah, it's lovely to see him in it, uh, and without a claw build, which I think is what most people do associate Mr. Page with still, though he has been playing at you know, wider races and at other times of the day as well. I think that's really stretching his Blood Bowl ability, and I think this is going to really help that too. Yeah, and the one minute turns, right? He's normally yeah. he's normally takes a lot of time and obviously interacting with the chat and everything. And this is really going to be high pressure for him, I think. Yeah, frankly, I think I only ran out of time maybe twice. And I think he was probably two to three times. There wasn't that much in it. I thought he adjusted really, really well. Um, I think across the season, he'll get stronger and stronger at that format. Yeah. And the final match of this week was Andy Devo versus yeah, Jimmy Fantastic. Yeah, this one was, uh, I mean, I said so at the time, Jim, uh, I don't want to blow too much smoke up your uh, your rear end, but I, I thought you coached this really well. I thought Andy did too. Uh, there was one turn I really didn't like. Uh, even that, if it had worked out well, would have put you in a very tough position. The uh, the turn eight split where he got four die on your blitz that didn't manage to knock it over. Yeah. And had that knocked it over, I think the position would have locked you down. And I think we'd have looked at a 1-1 one -one there. Um, but it didn't, and you did manage to drive home to make it 1-1 one, one at the half. And then the second half was a little bit of a procession, as Andy was running out of elves. I know he doesn't like coaching Dark Elves against Dwarves, so his his uh, his draw for this tournament is absolutely horrific, facing three Dwarf builds and a Chaos Dwarf build. Um, yeah. he, he does get some fun things to bang on, but yeah, it's going to be a brutal, brutal season for Andy Davo. Um and, and this game, yeah, he, he tried all he knew to try, and the dice just said no. Sometimes that's going to happen in Blood Bowl. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he got, like, I managed to kind of force an early score, right? And yeah. then uh, yeah. it was really tricky. He got a blitz, so it made my score back really tough. So, like, yeah. um, I, I didn't want to go too hard for the score in case he counter scored, but then he took away a scoring threat, so then I just made a million GFIs to try and get into a bit of a bit of a shot at the score. And yeah, as you said, he went for the uh, he went for the witch blitz, whereas he could have just blitz from the front and got more people behind. And uh, you know, it's not it's not terrible, right? He's had a higher higher risk, higher reward. And then, yeah. yeah, as you say, second half was just made an easy, easy two-one. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you had you had a blitzer and the ball carrier in range. Uh, the second runner failed its final go for it to also get into range. Um, so the two pieces in range, I, I didn't mind just pushing the blitzer back a single square, and then a nice solid wall in front of the runner. I thought that could have been really hard for you to break through. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, his, his play. I'm not saying it was terrible. I just thought the risk reward, the reward was very high, but the risk was there too. And actually, he ended up promoting the Blitzer into a position where you could you used it, I thought, really creatively to get out of the wall he had put in front of you. Uh, and in the end, I mean, you managed to work it, so it was just a couple of two-pluses to score. Um, but a really interesting game of Blood Bowl. Uh, one that I, I hope, you know, on the VODs or on the YouTubes, uh, people have a look at. It's, uh, it's some cracking NAV-style Blood Bowl, that one. Thanks very much. And there you go. Top of Group B is Calcium. <laughs> well, Jim... Um, you know, luckily I'm not a gambling man. Or, as I said in Group A, there'd have been a few things there that cost me a couple of pounds. But here, I'd have lost my shirt if you'd have said, will Calcium be top of the group at the end of the first round? Um, I mean, perhaps that, I shouldn't have thought that. Perhaps with him, you know, up against uh, up against the stunty build. But, yeah, I mean, there we are. He sits proud. He's every right to brag. It won't last. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I like Calcium a lot, and it was nice, to, nice, nice to see him in it. So you know, he's great, very entertaining streamer. Um, Dio with the uh, with, with the bye week there. I mean, it, different uh, group A, right? With the loads of draws. Now this is being clearly into the wins and losses here. Yeah, I mean, the complete opposite. I mean, Dio, you know, must be regretting that he had the the bye week because. You know, he now looks at a, a bit of a mount, a bit of a mountain to climb. There's three teams already with a, a win registered. You know, draws do look like they could be fairly common in this format with the tight times. No overtime, of course, because it is a league. 
Um, yeah, it's the exact opposite to Shawnee, isn't it? Uh, he's got to be thinking, wow, I need to get this going, and I perhaps need a win in my first game, or else this is this is going to look quite bleak. Yeah, absolutely. At the same time, with the high variance, I don't think things are over for Inarian or Andy or Mr. Page. I think there is uh, space for them to climb back up that mountain. But, uh, yeah, yeah, really different table to Group A. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I mean, like, everyone in here is really good, so, like, you'd imagine all the tight, all the, all the matches are going to be mm -hmm. tight, all the groups are going to be tight. So yeah, every 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 point is going to count, isn't it? I'm prepared to you know put my uh, my my house that I just lost because of calcium top in the group back on the line, and say I don't think anyone's going to go six zero zero. No, for sure. I mean, and and there's no shame if anyone goes zero zero six, right? Because no, uh, I think that's probably as unlikely. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't have minded. I wouldn't have minded if I'd gone zero zero six. I'm happy that I've got a win. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, it is. It, I mean, that's a nice position to be in, isn't it? Um, to, have, to have registered one win. If it's now one zero five, you've still always got that win to look back on. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And now the fixtures for week two in Group B. We've got Andy Devo versus Calcium, PC mm -hmm. versus Inarian, and Dionysian mm -hmm. versus Mr. Page. Well, I mean, if I, if I could start by talking about myself, it is my favourite <laughs> subject. Um, <laughs> It's a bit of a banana skin, isn't it, Jimmy? We've, we've looked at that fling build. It, it's it's a lovely build. It's got all sorts of tools. And, of course, you go into that game, there isn't a win. You know, you either beat flings or you lose. But if you beat flings, yeah, well, you beat the flings. If you lose, wow. Um, not only do you expect most of the rest of the uh, the league to get a win there, but uh, I should I'd imagine there'll be some mockage. So that that's a bit of a banana skin. I'm really hoping to, to drive that home. And from two really tricky looking tack matches no i could be two wins there that'd be lovely andy davo of course uh, that's the game he really has to get a result in uh, knowing his distaste for dwarves and this is a very dwarf heavy league he's got to do something hasn't he he's got to get the result against calcium cars yeah on a loss already uh, and calcium on a win of course flying high uh, cal cum cas we have on the graphic there but uh, i find that very amusing so uh I'm not going to call it a mistake. I'm just going to say you know him very well. Yeah, no, no one would have noticed that if you hadn't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Mutan dwarves, of course, and the goblins, um, it, it's it's very common in Blood Bowl nowadays. Just to add a letter, take one away. No one really minds. Exactly. And yeah, and then of course we got his bye week. yeah Dionysian uh, coming off his 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 week. As we said in this league. Unlike Shawnee, he's facing three people with a win on board already. So uh, he's really got to get the win over Mr. Page. Um, he is another. He's the Chaos Dwarf build in this league. So again, the death roll is going to be a big, big issue there. They're a bit more capable of a quick score than maybe the Dwarves are. Um, so perhaps Mr. Page needs to think about when he fields that. And, uh, and Dio needs to think about, you know, can he get a quick score in and get it straight back off the field? Um, that could be a really interesting matchup too. Again, all killer, no filler. Yeah, absolutely glorious. Can't wait to watch all of those matches on Twitch and everything. And obviously, people, the people who play in it, will be putting their vods up on YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to be working on a website, so mm -hmm. there will be a website eventually, I'm sure. Um, yeah. And I'm not sure we're going to see both sides of every game getting streamed, but I would imagine every single game is going to get streamed on Twitch. I think there will be a VOD of just about everything available to to us to uh, to upload, to have a look at. And quite often, both sides at the same time. I know me and Anarian have been talking about a simulcast, where we're both streaming and chatting as we play. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Um, so thank you very much, Purple Chest. Oh, an absolute pleasure. So far, this league has been uh, a lot of fun to do. Glorious. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.